claim, sir, that science is somehow linked to atheism, right? You linked the increase in scientific knowledge to a decrease in belief in God. All I did was challenge that. Okay, now I didn't. I'm not. I'm going to be a Quaker. So if you interrupt me, I'll stop. Okay, so that's not what I said. I said science is pushing back. In other words, the knowledge where science is increasing is pushing back the religious. In other words, some of the religious claims. I'm not saying that people in the world don't believe in God. Can we get that distinction? Okay, so let's let's clarify. What's your claim? Your claim is science is getting rid of the intellectual foundation so science of religion? Is, so science is giving us a better understanding of the natural world, whereas in the past, we would have looked towards a god or gods as an explanation. Now science is explaining things and we need to less and less look towards the god. That does not mean that people are not going to believe in a god. That's okay, the, that's the distinction. That is predicated on the assumption that people believe in God because of God of the gaps. Sure. Right? Where on earth did you get that from? Everybody that I speak to, everybody that I speak to, whenever they bring up something about science, so they judging, want to include, they want to put God in wherever they can. No, no, so be it consciousness, okay. rationality. How did how did evolution get started? The Big Bang, science, um, cosmology, anything where we don't yet have an answer. Ah, now we can insert God. Where we have an answer, nobody here is going to claim that God is creating life. Why? Because we now have an understanding. Okay. So your belief that people believe in God because of God of the gaps is based upon your conversation at the end of this corner with people there. It's, it's well when we look back in history, isn't it? We, we can look back in history as well and we can go, hey, people were mightily ignorant about virtually everything in the natural world. When? All the time in the in the history. No, that's not true. So we didn't know about that's the germ not... disease. We didn't know that the Earth okay. orbited the sun. Okay. Okay. We didn't know there was okay. more than one galaxy. Okay. 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 I mean, one go on with one a zillion second. things. Evolution, one whatever one, it is. One second. One second. Now, there's one fallacy which we need to move away from and move on to another fallacy which is about the ancients. Did you know the Greeks calculated the circum circumference of the Earth? Of the Greeks, one guy, Eratosthenes. Yes. Was he a Greek? I don't know what he was. But okay, who cares sign? if he's Greek? Well, there you go. He is Fugian. All right. There's one guy. But who he calculated. existed 2,000 years ago. Okay. Did 280 you... BC. Yeah. Okay. You're saying they didn't know that the Earth orbited the Sun. You're telling me no Greek knew that. But most people didn't. You guys didn't. Know okay. Okay. Wait. 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 One second. How do you think they built the pyramids? Using mathematics and engineering, correct? We don't know, do we? It's still a mystery. Okay. A thousand years ago, and that's quite a long time ago, we had Hassan ibn Haytham, who came up with the scientific method. Now, when he came up with the scientific method, if his belief was, I don't want to explore nature because that will make me decrease my belief in God because I believe in God of the gaps, then he wouldn't have come up with the scientific method and nor would the other Muslims who actually did science at the time and then the baton was passed on to medieval Europe. Now what I find strange is your claim of God of the gaps. I want to know if you actually understand where this argument originated from as a formal argument. No, I don't know where it originated from. It was actually from. about 400 years ago. Do I need in, to know that? In, yes, you do. Okay. It was actually in Europe where Christian philosophers, they wanted an argument for the existence of God. And there was many arguments for the existence of God, which I would say were quite fallacious, right? So one of them was this argument about, can you think of the most perfect being and so forth. And one of the arguments that they actually came up with was the God of the gaps. And guess who critiqued them? Other Christian philosophers. Do my 400 years ago. Was there any atheist now, philosophers now, at the time? Now, now, no. Yes, of course they were. Were they? Well, there was David Hume, right? You said 400 years ago. Hume was a couple. Okay, of 400 years ago. Let's keep they, they, Well, actually, about 2,000 years ago, some of the Greeks were atheists too. Okay, right? we're going no, off no, on a tangent here. We're not. We're not. Because what we're actually doing is this: we're unraveling some of the claims that you're actually making. And one of the things which I actually do want to challenge is this. Just recently, we had this march about science, right? I'm sure you must have heard of it. March about science, no. you know, marching for science, right? No, and I, it's this march they had in the states where you know all these atheists come out and they're like, we're marching on the behalf of science. We're doing this. We're doing that, right? Now, what I want to do is this. I want to make a claim, and I want you to challenge my claim if you think I'm wrong. 
I believe the vast majority of atheists who believe in Darwinian evolution or they claim, you know, we believe in science, we believe in this, they believe in it, not because they understand it, not because it makes sense, but purely because they've been, they've been socialized into it. And I'm going to make a secondary claim, which is going to be very particular, which is, I do not believe you understand anything about Darwinian evolution and you only believe in it because of socialization. Now that's a claim. Correct. So are you willing to challenge that claim? Sure. So I want you to tell me, how does bacteria lead to us? How does, how does bacteria lead to us? Through the process. Now, if you're going to ask me, I'm reading a book, two books actually at the moment. So I know you're the evolutionary guy, and I know no, many I'm of your the arguments. Guy. Well, you've debated Aaron Ra, and you're one of the evolutionary guys. So one of the things you come to do here is try and steer it towards evolution. So I will tell you up front that I'm not an expert on evolution. You know more potentially about it. You get into finer details. What I will tell you is that I'm uh, reading the book Why Evolution is True by Jerry Coyne. I've got that. Uh, good. So maybe you need to debate Jerry Coyne on evolutionary psychology, etc. And also uh, Dr. Alice Robbins. Okay. The, the so human... in that in that book, Why Evolution is True. I'm reading it. Yes. Right. You're reading it. Right. Yes. How many definitions of species are there? I don't know. I'm not there yet, brother. Okay. Now you're going to cross question me on the book. I said I'm reading it. Okay. But I'll tell you. Fine, there's at least 26 okay now if there's 26 different definitions of species and the claim is which I made originally that people believe in Darwinian evolution majority of atheists including yourself not because they understand it because they're socialized into it I want you to tell me which of those definitions not two or three just tell me one of those definitions which Darwin used in the origin of species, okay. which is the reason why you accept that the origin of species is correct. Okay, so I want you to get away from this. You do this a lot. You keep going into Darwinism. Today, it's the modern theory of evolution. Why do you keep talking back about Darwinism? It's like Nazism. People have moved on. The modern theory of evolution is a lot further advanced than what Darwin predicted in his time. So Darwin Would you wrong. agree with that? Darwin Genetics, DNA, etc. I'm not saying Darwin's wrong. It's been improved sure. a lot. But that's, so, a, that's a good so question. What, what I'd love to hear you sure. say in the, in the future, Sabur, is talk to people about the modern theory of evolution. Get rid of the word Darwinism, because that seems to me okay. a straw man. Okay, so, okay? Okay, that's a very good point that you've made. And I'm going to answer the rest no, of your no, question. No, no, wait, wait, one sec. That's a very good point that you've made, but it's incorrect. And I'll tell you why. The term Darwinism is not a term which I came up with. It is a term Alfred Russell Wallace, who was Darwin's contemporary, who disagreed with Darwin on human evolution, he coined. And till today, we have atheist evolutionary biologists, sci um, psychologists, and philosophers of science who use the term Darwinism as a academic term which refers to the idea that natural selection is the primary driving force of evolution and they acknowledge the modern synthesis of course they include the subfields of population genetics um, fossils dna all of that right that's not the issue the issue is darwinism as a term is an academic term so when i actually use it i'm not using it in a derogatory way why why? like nazism and also you need to understand the reason why I use the term Darwinism or Darwinian evolution is because there's many different alternatives. So when we speak about the modern theory of evolution, if I say, if you said Rob, if you said, well, refer to the modern theory of evolution. Well, which modern theory? Because we have orthogenetic evolution. We have evolution by natural genetic engineering. We have neo-Lamarckian evolution. We have uh, neo-mutationism. We have evolution by self-organization and the acquirance of um, entire genomes. We have all these different evolutionary models. Most of them are non-Darwinian. So when I use the term Darwinism, Aaron Ra doesn't know what he's actually talking about, which is why in the debate, he couldn't actually, he, all he could say is, well, you see in America, there's a different definition to Darwinism than there is in the UK. That's pretty much all he said. So the reason why I make this distinction is because atheists who go around talking about this theory like it's the best thing since sliced bread, do not even know the basic definition. So my original claim that the majority of atheists don't even understand Darwinism, including yourself, has just been proven correct. If you think so, that's fine. Because you don't know the basic terms. I'm reading the book. Do I need to be an expert on everything? If we have a cosmological, if I bring my friend here as a cosmological expert, and he says to you, oh, well, you don't understand this, that means it's proven right. Come on, Sabur. No, why, why? 
Just because that, I look, don't know specifically. I'm making a particular claim. Tell me are. if I'm wrong. I've told you. You only believe in it because of socialization. You don't understand it. I believe in it because it's a naturalistic explanation sure. for how we get here. Sure. I am reading books on it. That's why I so believe in it. So you understand it? I you don't understand it fully. Thank you. Thank you. That's what I'm looking for. Just admit but it. Do you, you don't do understand any, it. Does anybody understand anything fully, to use your term? That's fine. Do you know what you call that? You call that basically just pressing the red button to make everything explode. Oh, no, well, we don't really know anything, you know. Is that leaf really green? I thought you well, were if you really, well, Oh, sorry, I am a Quaker. <laughs> is, that, is that leaf really green? Because uh, <laughs> it actually kind of looks like it's a reflection in all the other colours in the spectrum of actually being observed. Disingenuous, so. No, he's making sense, actually. No, no actually, what, to, actually exactly. what I'm doing is this. Something. You have your little YouTube channel speaker, yeah, whatever it's called, right? You come around here, you're trying to talk to people, right? Yes, I have. I came, in here, I came here just to show you do not have a clue what you're talking about. Unless, you, if you want to challenge that, that's fine. Or else I'm going to walk away with that last bottom line. You do have no idea how Darwinian evolution works. I have a basic idea, that's it. If you're going to question me... Okay, deeply, let's check your basic idea. A basic What's idea? your basic Natural idea? Natural selection through mutation. That's the basic idea. Natural selection through, through mutation? Through mutation. Natural selection through mutation. Okay. Let me now tell you're going to question no, me No, no, no. Let me tell you that. Let me just tell you something. And do you know what? I'm not, I'm not someone who gets angry often, right? But I'll tell you something that does really piss me off. Absolutely. Please do. When somebody tries to make claims and he shoot down those claims and then as you have beaten them on the floor they decide to shout something back at you like hey, what did you say and then they try and defend themselves so you're telling me the basic that you understand about darwinian evolution is this is natural selection plus mutation well guess what that's not even darwinism <laughs> it's natural selection plus random mutations so what if it's natural selection plus mutations guess what it becomes Epigenetics, so autogenetic evolution. So even so even you right. yourself, yeah, even though you were slapped on the floor, you said no. I do understand come something. Come back to the Quaker. Oh, I'm Quaker. Sorry. Diversion. And you do come Diversion. back to something, and question. you do come back to something, which is there's I do understand something basic, which is I'm not going to give you any evidence of how biodiversity came, how you know biochemistry, genetics, anatomy, biochemistry. Um, uh, linguistics, how all of this fits within the evolutionary model. I'm just going to tell you, this is what I understand. Two friggin' terms, mutation Quaker, Quaker. and natural selection, Quaker. and you still got Quaker. it wrong. Quaker. You still got it wrong. So like I said again, sorry, I should be a Quaker. So effectively, you don't know the basics. No, no, no. <laughs> you strip down evolution to two terms and you got them wrong. So here's what I'm going to do. You don't understand Darwinian evolution. You've only been socialized into it. That's my claim. If you're not challenged that claim, I'm going to stay. If you don't want to challenge it, I'll walk away and that's the bottom line. You and the rest of those atheists, they have no idea what they're talking about. Darwinian evolution is a trick. That's okay, so... Are so you going to challenge my claim? Sure. Go on. Okay. So, the reason why we believe in naturalistic processes is because most of the things that have been explained on this planet have been explained through natural processes. So is it reasonable to believe that we can explain most, if not everything, within our universe in some naturalistic way? That's a good question. And I'm actually totally happy to move on to that question. It's a separate discussion. So let's close the previous discussion but, and start this. But you asked me the question, sure. why, why do, sure. do atheists believe in evolution sure. because it's socially constructed? Sure, sure, yes. sure. Okay, now let's move that, on to this fine. discussion about naturalism. But that was the answer. So to you question. said most of the things have been explained via naturalism. I, correct, yes, correct. Okay, here's what I'm going to say. Do you agree or not? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say something. Not only do atheists not understand Darwinian evolution, they don't even understand science. And I'll tell you why. Most of the things can be explained naturalistically. Can reason be explained naturalistically? It's a naturalistic uh, byproduct, isn't it? A byproduct of that's, naturalism. That's an assumption. But, but, but now you're going on to something different. I said most no, of the not. things. I, you said most of the things can be explained naturalistically, correct? correct? Yes. Okay. Most things in our natural world. Okay. Yes. Our ability to reason, can it be explained naturalistically? There are um, theories, as far as I understand, like emergent materialism, like evolutionary reliability. Emergent materialism? These are some of the theories. Emergent that are, materialism? These are some of the theories. What the hell is that? <coughs> Have you not heard of them? I do know exactly what that is, but okay. that's got nothing to do with this discussion. You're asking me what You're I'm using. Do you know what you're doing? Wait, wait, wait. You're you. Sorry. I, I need this guy next to me. So calm. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm the calm. Okay. <laughs> I got so angry, I lost what I was saying. What was I actually saying? Do you want to stop? You're about this. No. Do you want to stop? No. Emerging, Emerging materialism. materialism. So here's Wake why, up. as a Quaker, I feel like breaking my biscuit <laughs> rather than getting peed off. <laughs> this is what atheists do. When they don't understand something or when they want to sound clever, they throw a term out. Emergent materialism. Emergent materialism is an explanation, a type of explanation for consciousness, not the origin of reason. So what you just did is when you didn't know an answer, you just decided to throw out a philosophical term to sound clever. The origin of reason according to atheists themselves, including Alex Rosenberg, who is a full-out atheist, militant athe atheist according to him, who actually is an anti-theist. He's a philosopher of science. This is what he says. He was sitting in a meeting and the meeting was called Moving Naturalism Forward. In the meeting, you had all of the atheist pimps. You had Richard Dawkins. You had that old guy who should be in a this coffin, Stephen Weinberg. You had all these different different people sitting down. And while he's sitting there, they were talking about moving naturalism forward. Alex Rosenberg, everybody had to put out an issue on the table, which is an issue which is outstanding for naturalism to move forward. And guess what Alex Rosenberg said? We have no explanation for the origin of reason. Okay, so let's break it down. What is, what is I'm the... I'm a Quaker, sorry. Yeah, uh, you forgot. That's okay. What do, what do you understand by the origin of reason? What, what do you mean by reason? Okay, again, we've moved on. I am happy to move on to this discussion. Totally happy. You, just... But as long as you concede that it's a different discussion to what we're having, that's fine. You brought it up. I didn't bring up reason, did I? I said no, you next said science. you said everything as an I said, as you said things I said you said you said most of the things that we know can be explained naturalistically. I said most things in the world we can explain through the scientific method or naturally. Yes. Okay? Naturally. All knowledge is self-knowledge because it goes through you. And what does it go through? A reasoning process. And what's so the foundation? all I ask is this. Is there an explanation for the origin of reason? You said yes. And I just showed you that even according to atheists, there is none. So explain to me what reason is, because you brought That's fine. I'm happy to move on to that no, discussion. That's part of the same discussion. No, I am happy to move on to that discussion as long as you concede on another point that you have no idea what you're talking about. If you're going to keep saying that, and I think there's no point in continuing to talk, because when I ask you a question, and it's part of your initial assertion, then you say we're moving off topic. No, because what, you claim that what I want to do is this. What I want to do is this. Another thing that atheists do is this. They always run off to a different topic. The topic that I want to speak about right now is this. You made a claim that most of the things that we know can be explained naturalistically. And what I asked you about the origin of reason, you said that too, and I showed you not that. Now you're asking me what is reasoning what? or what is the origin of reason. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to say, Rob, you know what? Fantastic. We had a great conversation. I'm going to go back to my quicker mode. We'll move on to that. I'm happy to do that. But that's a separate discussion. That's all I'm saying. A separate discussion. I'm happy to go into what the origin of reason is from my understanding. Totally happy, but it's a separate discussion. Yes, and your claim was that I, I, I can't account for it. That's a point of view. The origin of reason is a thorn. And do you know the first person to know that this is actually a really big problem was actually Darwin himself. Because Darwin said, how can I accept that you know the convictions of a monkey's mind how can i accept that how can i accept our own convictions in our mind if we evolved and we have a common ancestor with them now the co-founder of the theory of natural selection along with darwin alfred russell wallace another atheist he actually moved away from darwin which is why we call it darwinian evolution not darwin and wallace's theory how it was known in the victorian times because he moved away from darwin he said Darwinian evolution is true for everything except human beings. And why did he say this? He said this because of savages, which they used to call anybody who was basically uh, in uh, South America or Africa, right? Savages, if you take them to Europe, they can do maths, they can do physics, they could do psychology. So Arthur Russell Wallace said, do you know what? Darwinism cannot or natural selection cannot explain this this reasoning capacity which is way more than you need for survival and reproduction which is why he moved away from darwin now what actually happened was this darwin got 
peed off. So he wrote a letter to Alfred Russell Wallace and do you know what he said? He said, don't murder our child. Because if you both come out and you say, this is our theory, and one of you says, actually, I don't think it makes sense in terms of human beings, you make the theory look bad. So the origin of reason, it is a very complicated area, but the bottom line is, from a Darwinian perspective, there is no explanation. Let's, let's assume, let's assume for the sake of argument, that there is currently not an explanation for that. Let's is that okay? Can no, we, we're not going to assume. No, we're not going to. Okay. We, we are going to say, from a naturalistic point of view, it is impossible to give a origin of reason explanation in terms of survival and reproduction. Does it need to be? Does it need to be just survival and reproduction? Well, what you could do is you could reject Darwinism and go with something else. No, I'm just asking. Can does it does it have to be on that? Because remember, we've moved we've moved on from um, just survival and reproduction, haven't we? We're not just in the survival reproduction mode, if you want to call it that. Now. Would you agree with it? We're not just doing that now. Well, yes, but also what you need to understand is from a Darwinian perspective, when there is something which sticks out like a thorn, which is not surviving in reproduction, it is so easy to give a label to that mystery and say it's an evolutionary byproduct. So hospitals, survival of the unfittest, evolutionary byproduct. If you do that, there's no point in having a conversation because it's an unfalsifiable, unfalsifiable hypothesis. Because anything that fits in line with survival and reproduction, you say, hey, hey, that's mine, survival and reproduction. Anything that doesn't, you say, well, it's a byproduct. No, but we, we could say, we could do exactly what you've said is, which is we could say, hey, it's a mystery. We're still trying to work out how that is. No, right? I, I don't want to say it's a mystery. No, I want to say from an atheistic perspective, it makes no sense. And since atheists pretend to be clever and they pretend to be rational and they pretend to throw out terms which they don't understand, then how dare they claim they are rational when they can't give an explanation for the origin of reason. When I, as a Muslim, I can say, well, do you know what? Have a good day. If you want to pretend to be clever, that's absolutely fine. But you can't even give an explanation for the origin of reason. Okay, so what sort of explanation?